Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. We are your hosts, Wes Troop. And I'm Emily Liston. We wanted to thank everyone who watched our debut episode last week. And if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check that out. Uh, With thanks to everyone who followed us on Twitter, liked us on Facebook. We'll have the info for that a little later in the show. And thanks to everyone for all your comments on the video. (laughs) Yes, thank you, everyone, for the comments. (laughs) <laughs> this week, our main topic that we're going to discuss, uh, we are, since we are the hitchhiking hosts, our first attraction that we would give an overview and description and talk a little bit about would make sense to do The Haunted Mansion. <laughs> was an attraction that was a long time in the making. The idea had been thrown around before Disneyland Park had even opened. The attraction was originally penned to be a walk-through haunted house, and the company hired Imagineers Ken Anderson, Rolly Crump, and Yale Gracie to work on the project. Throughout the years, Rolly's idea turned into what would have been the Museum of the Weird which Walt himself liked. The museum never came to fruition, but some of the ideas made it into the mansion. Over the years, Mark Davis, Claude Coates, and Exitensio joined onto the project. Instead of the walkthrough idea, it was changed to the new Omnimover system called Doom Buggy uh, to speed up the ride's capacity and fit one to three guests in each. So when the Haunted Mansion finally opened in the New Orleans Square section of Disneyland on August 12, 1969, it was a huge success, drawing record crowds. The Walt Disney World version debuted on the opening day of the Magic Kingdom and is located in the Liberty Square section of the park. Very much like the ride on the inside, Magic Kingdom's mansion is larger on the outside and constructed to look like the old Northwestern mansions, opposed to its Californian cousin. Inside the building, guests are greeted by their ghost hosts and start out in a gallery with no windows and no doors. They then move into their doom buggies and venture through the mansion. Madame Leota, a talking head in a crystal ball, summons the spirits who come out for a a swinging wake. While it's all good spirited fun, writers pass through a ballroom scene seeing ghosts dancing a waltz, I guess the first version of Dancing with the Stars was Dancing with the Ghosts, to a graveyard where the ghouls play instruments and we see talking sculpture heads singing the ride's theme, Grim Grinning Ghosts. Before guests exit, they come across the hitchhiking ghosts who hover aboard your doom buggy and with a brilliant effect can see the ghosts riding along with you on your way out. The ride was given a facelift in 2007 and more updated effects were added. The Walt Disney World version was given an interactive queue where guests can play with the mansion themed props. The ride can also be found in Tokyo Disneyland and Disneyland Paris where it's titled Phantom Manor. The Disneyland version changes things up for the holidays with a Nightmare Before Christmas themed version. So many years later, the Haunted Mansion is still one of the most detailed and best rides at the parks. It's a must do on your vacation. Some spectacular facts, Uh, also some interesting facts. Some of my favorite facts about the Haunted Mansion is that the costumes cost about $900 each. Uh, Each morning, the cast members place a blood rose diamond on top of Mr. Gracie's grave and dig up the soil around the grave so that it looks like he was recently buried. And also on the graves outside of the ride, the names on the graves are actually the Imagineers that created the ride. Also, the original ghost host uh, was supposed to be the raven, which you can first see when the zombie spirit is lifting up the coffin, and then you can see again when entering the graveyard. And uh, I read somewhere that actually the reason why the 
dune buggies turn round is so that as you're coming down you can see the original ghost host or the raven because uh, he's right there uh, he'd be talking to you but it wasn't working out so they basically put the voice over for the ghost host and the raven just became the raven and finally the hitchhiking ghosts wasn't actually supposed to be in the original design for the haunted mansion and were added at the last minute well it's good they were otherwise we would still have an untitled show and i got to see the new version a couple years ago um and I was pretty impressed with it. Um, one thing I really liked with the newer version is when you first enter the uh, room, the chamber, with the portraits, uh, and the ghost host introduce himself, it sounds like he's going around the room. And I was like, whoa, that's really cool. I, 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 it was just like something like awesome, you know? It's just. The round sound has come yeah. to the <laughs> And uh, the footprints that appear on the ceiling, I like. Um, I like every single thing in this ride. There's so much going on, um, and it's 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 a lot to take in, but it's definitely one of the best rides in the park, in my opinion. My favorite part is definitely the ballroom scene where the ghosts are dancing and under the table and dueling in the gallery photos. That's definitely my favorite part. I think it's really clever the way they do it, and I like how the, the props are set up real and the ghosts are obviously illusions unless they are real and they're just not telling you um but yeah i look, really like the different contrast i really like how i really like looking at that bit when you're going past um i also really like the end the the end scene in the attic yeah i really like it like how the it shows the groom and then it shows their heads cut off and then obviously the bride at the end i really like that bit and obviously, the ending where the Hitchhiking Ghost, the new version where the head the Hitchhiking Ghost is in your cart, but this time he takes the, your heads off and swaps them or does something different each time. Did you? Was yes, I, I love that part. I, yeah. it, it, it caught me by surprise, actually. Yeah, same, yeah. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> well, right, cause normally, it's just sitting there with you, and then you can sort of... I always sit into it. <laughs> But this time, it did something really cool, and I was, I was amazing. And a ghost will give you a lap dance. Uh, one of the parts in the Haunted Mansion ride that I'm absolutely terrified of is the graveyard scene, because when you go through it, and the ghosts pop up behind the grave and make a loud noise, I hate that bit. I'm terrified. I block my ears. I shut my eyes. I absolutely hate that bit. And to make it worse, when the dune buggies go backwards, the first time I went on that ride, my dad was in the cart behind us and decided to bang on the back of my buggy <laughs> and leant over and banged on it. And so obviously I thought someone was behind me and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and it's just, it always brings back memories and I just hate that part of the ride. So, yeah. Where's the only thing that you don't like about the ride that you're scared of? To quote Ray Parker Jr. I ain't afraid of no ghost. And we lost all our viewers there. Also, what I, what I love about the ride is you can ride it a hundred times and every time you can see something different. Like you're like, oh, there's a hidden Mickey or here's this or, you know, it's just, it's really cool. that there, Like I said before, there's so much detail to it that you, you can just ride it all the time and still learn new things about it years later. <laughs> This week in the theme park news, uh, the Thea Awards came out, and Disney got three big awards. Uh, the first one went to Mystic Manor. And if, we're going to talk about this on a future episode. But if you haven't seen Mystic Manor, it's in Hong Kong Disneyland. Obviously, you probably weren't there. Unless you're from Hong Kong, then maybe you were. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, Check it out on YouTube. I, I watched it a few months ago when it first opened, and it's an awesome ride. Uh, it received the award for Outstanding Achievement uh, for an attraction. So that's one of the biggest awards you can get. Uh, definitely an awesome ride. It's, it's brand new. Uh, it's sort of their version of the Haunted Mansion, but not because it has nothing to do with ghosts. But, <laughs> but uh, I, I, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, uh, it there's a monkey in it, and... It, 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 an anima, audio animatronic monkey and it's just it's fun it's
looks like a really cool ride. I wish they would bring it to Animal Kingdom instead of Avatar Land, but that's another show where we're going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so definitely um, check out Mystic Manor on YouTube if you haven't seen it yet, and we're going to talk about it in, uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, also, getting an award this week, Enchanted Tales with Belle, of course, which is in the new Fantasyland uh, section of the Magic Kingdom, received award for Outstanding Achievement in Participatory Character Greeting. Obviously, this is one of the strongest character greeting things uh, as she tells a story and the kids come up and, uh, well, even some adults are get into it. I, I won't say it was me because I wasn't on it yet, but <laughs> um, the, uh, and, and it looks like a lot of fun for the kids. The audio animatronics in that, the talking Lumiere and the talking wardrobe uh, definitely look amazing. And, and of course, one of my favorite attractions that Mel absolutely loves, this is her favorite attraction of all time, the Enchanted Tiki Room. Uh, the Disneyland version, uh, is which is celebrating its 50th anniversary, by the way, received the award, the Thea Classic Award. Yay. Moving over to the Disney's California Adventure Park, uh, we have the, some World of Color news. Uh, World of Color, of course, if you haven't don't know what that is, is a great nighttime spectacular uh, that they have at California Adventure. Definitely look that up too. Um, but anyway, the news this week is that their Winter Dream Show has opened. Um, obviously the winner uh, version of the show uh, it's a special holiday version now including the movie Frozen or, or a little bits from it at least not the whole movie But uh, and so if you're a Frozen fan definitely check that out and uh, don't forget to glow with the show and like everything that goes through the holidays it's running now up until January 5th because everything ends January 5th evidently we said that last episode. And in case any English people are watching, Wes is not saying winner, he is saying winter. Jeez. <laughs> and something I'm really excited about is the Frozen Meet and Greet, which is now open in Epcot's Norway Pavilion. You can meet the sisters and the stars of the film, Anna and Elsa. And a new restaurant is coming to the Morocco Pavilion in Epcot called the Spice Road Table. Uh, it offers small plates like jumbo shrimp, sausage, chicken drumettes, and special drinks. It's said to be great for viewing illuminations here. Uh, it will have 120 outdoor seats and 60 booths inside. So everybody grab your fez and head over to the Spice Road table. Indeed. One of my favorite rides that is not there anymore, unfortunately, was Horizons, which was uh, replaced by Mission Space, unfortunately, one of my least favorite attractions currently. Uh, but at least we get this out of it. Horizons 30th anniversary is this week, and a t-shirt has been made available at DisneyParks.com slash store, if you go there. Uh, it's available November 21st through the 25th. Uh, there is a special Horizons 30th Anniversary t-shirt. I ordered mine yesterday, it's, and it's going to take like six to eight weeks, but it's going to be amazing. Uh, I'll wear it when I get it. Um, the front is the robotic butler on it, and it says with the tagline, If we can dream it, we can do it. And just like the end of the attraction, uh, where you could p choose your own ending, uh, land, sea, or space, you can choose your own design on the back of the shirt, land, sea, or space. I, of course, chose space because I love Uranus. So definitely, if you're a Horizons fan, it's uh, it's $24.95 plus shipping, of course. Um, but it's definitely cool. I saw some people on the blogs saying that they're going to order all three. And uh, I'm not that much of a fan, but <laughs> but I, someone said they have it tattooed on their leg, the Horizons logo. Uh, while I love Horizons, I wouldn't go that far, but... I, I, I'll buy the shirt. You need to get a tattoo of Uranus. The US Post Office released a 20-page Harry Potter stamp. Uh, there was a ceremony at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter to celebrate it. Which I'm a little bit bummed about because they haven't done it in England. Or maybe they have, but I was not aware of it. So... Yay! And, uh, if anyone's nice enough, hint, hint, wink, wink, Wes, uh, <clears throat> could buy me some from America, seeing as England don't have them. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, um. thank you. <laughs>
Also, new Disney Spring Progress. Downtown Disney has opened a new pedestrian walkway bridge connecting Pleasure Island to the west side. Um, Fit to Run is a new runner's superstore which has opened earlier this month. The first of four food trucks has opened. It's called the Superstar Catering Truck. It serves a variety of different meatballs. Uh, that's open this week as well in the Disney Springs Progress. And the Festival of Seasons is now going on with live entertainment, carolers and Santa Claus appearances from November 21st to December 24th. Because obviously Father Christmas, or Santa as you guys call him, uh, cannot be seen after Christmas Eve as he is resting. Kids, he's resting. Well, that's all the time we've got for this week. Emily, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs? You can find me on Twitter um, at, at EL5AME, or you can find my merchandise on redbubble.com slash people slash Emily Liston 4, or my new merchandise website, which is www.floatingturtle.co.uk. Yeah, so check it out. All right, and of course with me, you can subscribe to my other YouTube, youtube.com slash westside of 515. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes A List. And we have a brand new uh, Hitchhiking Hosts uh, Twitter that you can follow. It's at Hitch Host Show. And also you can like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Hitch Host Show. And don't forget to... For next week's episode. Bye, see you next week.